and thank him for making the time to host this session. I'd also like to welcome all the executives from DUT, the leadership, all the managers here in present. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the SRC, student clubs and societies for your presence and thank you for making the time to be here and I also welcome you. Donors, sponsors, government officials, members of diplomatic corps, media, caterers, everyone who's here who's playing any role, you are very welcome and we thank you for being here. I was talking to one of our guests uh, this afternoon and they said to me, you know, every time we come to Midlands, we feel this homely vibe. So we are very excited that DUT is hosting this event here in the Midlands. And part of the reason is for us to showcase all the great work that is happening in the Midlands. There are still people who have an often mindset. They tend to think that DUT is only in Durban. We are here in the Midlands. Earlier on today, I took the members of media around and showed them around the campuses. So they had first-hand witness of all the infrastructure developments taking place, and we are very excited. So those who never had the opportunity to engage with the Midlands campus to see what this is all about, you are very welcome. Espoused in Envision 2030, it's a strategic objective says we as DUT are an engaged university. So this occasion today demonstrates that objective, that we are here to engage with all stakeholders, to inform them about what DUT is all about. How are we planning to make DUT creative, distinctive, and impactful? So to that effect, our Vice Chancellor has taken time of course, out of the busy schedule, to come and share with us all the plans that are in place to make us a great university. For those of you who don't know, DUT was top, topping the charts as one of the best universities. So we are moving from good to great, as they say. And this happens because of each and every one here in present today. I know you've sacrificed a lot, whether you're a student helping other students, a sponsor sponsoring us in one way or the other, our partners giving us technology, bringing more lessons into to our classroom, members of our staff who tirelessly spend a lot of time and effort in making DUT work. We appreciate you, we thank you. We can only become even greater by working together collaboratively. So the session today, really, ladies and gentlemen, we will listen to the VC. She will sh he will share with us all the plans and, of course, challenges that we have. Your part is to sit back, relax, and listen. There probably will be a chance for you to ask questions. And if you don't get a chance to ask questions tonight, please feel free to email us or whisper to our ears later on. But please make sure that we hear your voice, because we can only do great work by knowing what is it that you have to contribute. We only have limited capabilities, but for us to make impact to the society, we need to engage. So we are here to engage. Yes, lastly, I just want to remind you it's Friday. Relax, you've already made it. There are colleagues who are stuck in traffic. Our mayor was supposed to be here because of a lot of things that are happening in government. He couldn't be here with us. But I'm sure there are a lot of people who are locked online. We appreciate you taking time to lock and witness this uh, outstanding occasion firsthand. So I'd like to welcome you, enjoy the proceedings, and let's continue working together to make DUT great. Thank you all. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Molete. We are very proud of Envision 2030 and our values and principles that bind us to Envision 2030, and excellence is one of those. Before I invite the Vice Chancellor to deliver the State of the University address, which is the highlight of today, it gives me immense pride and joy to share some of the excellence that we have at DUT with you. We have three of our students who are studying drama, and they're going to be 
doing a, a short poetry recital for you, just to get you in the mood ahead of our State of the University address. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome our three DUT students, Sbashle Magwaza, Tobeka Noktraka, and Nokobongwa Kanyile. Greetings, everyone. I am Tobega Nopaga, and I am going to be reciting a poem entitled An, Al An Alumni's Ode. My academic consortia, your teachings are invaluable. The world proclaimed education is the key, but you dared to delve with us into the nitty gritty. You dared to ask, what is education without integrity, accountability, honesty? Honestly, what is education without humanity? It is the humane humans and the chatter that fills up in the corridors and the walls of this institution as high as our dreams that comfort us. The future is not bleak. And then you showed up on our screens, 2020, when the world was ridden with death and cuff. Mics on, mics off. You made a way, you made us tough. And then we realized in education, truly there is a sanctuary of our dreams. And not all heroes wear capes. Some distinguished hoods, caps, and graduation gowns. We thank you. Greetings, uh, my name is Bahle Magwaza, and I'll be reciting a poem. Durban University of Technology, the quality of excelling, possessing good qualities in high degree, I call it excellency. DUT, home integrity and respect, look at me with all the professionalism. What can I say? It was embedded in my heart the moment I walked through those gates of Deben University of Technology. We came to use seeking education, but we found more than that. We found a home full of lectures. Soon they became our parents, committed into shaping us to become a better version of ourselves, but not forgetting accountability and always teaching us to take accountability of our actions. DUT, our home, your home, my home, our home. Thank you. Thank you for those uh, wonderful poems. We have one more, who is going to be integral to providing sign language services to those with hearing impediments so that no one is excluded from the state of the university address this afternoon. Also, once again, uh, hello to those who are watching us on our online stream on YouTube and Facebook. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me immense pleasure to welcome to the podium to deliver the 2023 State of the University Address, our Vice-Chancellor and Principal of the Durban University of Technology. Please give a warm round of applause to Professor Tandwa Mtembo. I'm very sorry for taking off my gown and my jacket. I'm one of those who has a fair share of very productive uh, sweat glands. Uh, it's one of the few things I inherited. Uh, I will just say all protocol observed because uh, both 
the program director and uh, Dr. Joe Maliti have really welcome, welcomed each and every one of you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I welcome everyone to the 2023 DUT State of the University Address. This is the first physical one since COVID-19's lockdown between 2020 and 2022. It is also the first State of the University Address held both physically and virtually. Ironically, it's thanks to COVID-19 that virtual attendance is second nature now making it possible for many of our people and stakeholders, internal and external, to listen in this afternoon. The state of the university address does uh, three simple things. It looks back and it also looks forward. It looks back reflecting on how DUT people performed against our strategic plan, Envision 2030 strategic plan, whose year 2022 page is our 2022 extended annual performance plan we call here at DUT the EAPP. Secondly, and more importantly perhaps, the State of the Investor Address looks forward providing a peak into our EAPP 2023, which Council approved on 26 November 2022. And then thirdly, and given that we have been implementing our strategy since 2020, the State of the University Address takes us from merely leading by, to paraphrase Peter Drucker, doing the right, right things that Envision 2030 incorporates but rather managing purposefully and determinately by doing things right based on our plans. So there's a slight difference between doing the right things, which is what we do as leaders, and doing things right, which is what we do as managers and administrators. In so many ways, therefore, the State of the University Address is a public demonstration of several of our values and principles, including transparency, honesty, integrity, accountability, professionalism, commitment, and excellence. And I'm glad our young poets here referred to quite a number of those values and principles. They are really getting embedded in everything we're doing. According to the three periods of our strategic plan 2030, the period between 2021 and 2023 is our different period. We call it the different period. Without being presumptuous, I hope everyone in attendance can confirm that duty is indeed becoming different even before the end of this period, which is the end of this year. From being different by the year end, we will then move into the upended period between 2024 and 2026. Ultimately, during the last three years of our Envision 2030, that will be between 2027 and 2030, which is our transformed period, we will have ample evidence of our contributions towards transforming our societies and their economies. When we converged in our halls on the 26th and the 27th February 2020, we dared to dream. We dared to design our unique and social, uh, social compact as a community around our strategy. We expressed our discomfort with just being good and thanks to Jim Collins. Instead, we expressed our insatiable appetite for greatness. We understood that being comfortable with just being good would stifle our creativity, would stifle our innovation, 
and our entrepreneurial flair. We understood we would, perhaps inadvertently, contribute to the impoverishment of human reality, and that being what we borrow from Franz Fanon, that we, have, we must be careful about things that we do that contribute to the impoverishment of human reality. Instead, we made a bold commitment to contribute towards improving the lives and livelihoods of our people in the broader society. And as Franz Fanon would have, to rather enrich human reality. It is against this goal and commitment that I present this address. And in presenting it, I use the logic of our strategy on a page and Vision 2030 as a strategy predicated on the balanced scorecard, it has four perspectives, namely stewardship, systems and processes, sustainability, and society. So let me start with the first perspective, stewardship. This perspective is one of the first two that we call enabling and effecting perspectives. It is the most foundational of the four perspectives and comprises three interdependent strategic objectives, namely lived values, institutional culture, and creativity. So I'll address you on these three under this perspective stewardship. Lived values, institutional culture, and creativity. On live values, in 2019, we identify our DNA strengths, namely people centered on the one hand and on the other, innovative and entrepreneurial. They represent the most irreducible inner core of our being as DOT people. On 26 August 2022 and on 19 October 2022, our double helix monuments representing our DNA were unveiled at Steve Vigo and at this campus, respectively. That monument is just across, a walk across from here. These monuments are a visual and physical representation of the duty DNA that lies deep in our minds and thoughts, in our hearts and souls, in our collective personality and character, and in our behaviors and actions as DUT people. Again, in 2019, we identified our values and principles organically and collectively. During 2021 and 2022, we moved with greater zeal from strategy to implementation. At least 25 workshops were held with staff and students as we developed and rolled out our living values framework, which is predicated on our DNA strengths and on our values and principles. At its 17 September 2022 meeting, Council approved this living values framework. It will henceforth guide our minds and thoughts, our hearts and souls, our collective personality and character. It will also guide our behaviors and actions. The living values framework is a a product of this unique social compact I referred to in 2020 and earlier above. It is a product nurtured during our town hall meetings and various other broad-based engagements that took place in 2019 when we crafted our Envision 2030. Then we collectively chose our values and principles. Then. We trailblazed and crafted our strategy on a page that is the envy of many in our sector and beyond both nationally and internationally. Then, through a competition, we named this strategy on a page and Vision 2030. It is not surprising, therefore, that this unique social compact and the living values framework it has produced have already led to transient outcomes and impact and impacts. 
For example, based on our Envision 2030 Tracker survey conducted in September 2022, with many impact-oriented green fields, KPIs, and measures, the university is doing relatively well in terms of our students and our staff's sense of belonging to DUT. The largest share of our staff, 73%, and, of, and our students at 75%, felt around September 2022 that they feel they belong to the university. At 78%, most of our people express affinity to our values and principles, express affinity to the DUT way, the new DUT way. They, they feel they are part of this unique social compact that dates back to 2020 perhaps 2019, when we crafted Envision 2030. They are committed to living our values and principles. They are committed to living within the prescripts of the Living Values Framework. At its 15 September 2022, the Executive Management Committee approved a set of projects and initiatives we call Big Rocks and Flagships for implementation in 2023 and onwards. They emanate directly from our strategic plan around our Envision 2030. Our biggest big rock during this different period is that of innovating initiatives and mechanisms that will ensure we truly leave our shared values and principles. Some of the flagship projects in this respect involve embedding and socializing our behavior through campaigns, one of which we call the Bring to Life Our Living Values and Principles, BTL campaign. The BTL campaign will soon be launched and implemented this year. Several policies and procedures will be aligned to our living values framework. We want to live it and not put it on a shelf. Our 360-degree behavior instrument that is part of our performance management system will be predicated on this framework. Recruitment to DUT will not focus exclusively on qualifications and experience. Candidates will be appointed provided they also exhibit as many aspects as possible of our living values framework. We live in a treacherous country in terms of values and principles. Universities must start to put focus on values and principles because we are the light that shines across all of society. So let's start here, ensuring that the people we employ live of our values and principles. Moving to the second strategic objective under stewardship, which we call institutional culture. The lived values that I just talked about and institutional culture are two sides of the same coin. On the one side of the coin, we have socialized, embedded, shared, and demonstrated that we can live our values and principles. So the one side is about lived values. On the other side of the coin is the DUT way of doing things that will then have taken root and in turn it should radiate this institutional culture we seek. Again going back to our Envision 20 tracker survey, it revealed deep chasms in levels of cohesion, unity and common purpose among our people. Challenges across race, gender, age, stratifications, and in our multi-campus system remain gaping. According to Peter Drucker, the late Austrian-American professor and, and author, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So, we must keep focusing on polishing these two sides of our coin the lived values and our institutional culture. With insights 
into where disparities lie, purpose-built initiatives will be crafted by different units to foster cohesion, to break down silos, to build and strengthen collaboration amongst ourselves, our partners, our stakeholders. There were also challenges identified regarding embedding DUT principles and values in all facets of DUT governance and management. Fewer than half of staff thought that DUT fosters an organizational culture of caring, openness, honesty, and fairness, and that the institution operates in line with its vision and values. It's fewer than half who think that way. But these challenges notwithstanding, we also have great stories to tell regarding the new DUT way and our new institutional culture emerging from it. On 27 and 28 January 2023, our first year orientation week, our O week, and official opening at Steve Vigo and Indomiso campuses respectively, had the venues we used bursting at the seams. The start of our academic year 2023 has been markedly different from previous years. Other universities, no longer DUT now, have taken up the cup of being the protest capitals of higher education. The D2 Way Le Kutla Dialogue series took place just this last Saturday, 4 March, with great lessons shared and learned. DUT is proud to have student leaders in 2023 who lead from the front and are not pushed from behind by the masses. I always tell them that being a leader means you must lead. Being a leader, especially in a higher education institution, suggests that you must lead on the basis of facts and evidence, on the basis of reason, and on the basis of deliberation that you might require in order to put your advice to the masses across. So I'm glad that our young leaders exhibit a level of maturity, honesty, respect, integrity, commitment, and excellence that we have not seen in recent years. I will retire very peacefully with the kind of leadership I'm seeing. We have also noticed improved relations among several internal stakeholders. There is palpable enthusiasm from our institutional forum, for example, not only in playing its rightful role to nurture cohesion, unity, and common purpose, but to get its hands dirty in implementing many aspects of our Envision 2030 with resolve and agility. The Labor Management Consultative Forum, LMCF, is now functioning after a long period of disagreement on its terms of reference, on principles of consultation, on notions of governance, cooperative governance on the one hand and on the other, co-governance and co-management, amongst many other areas of disagreement. But we are back on track now. While some organizations are currently at each other's throats on salary in increments, what I could call our joint bargaining forum that negotiates salaries met and concluded a deal before the end of December 2022, which has already been implemented as of the start of January 2023. And I'm not going to announce what the, the percentage salary increase is because of what is happening around. Some people are getting nothing, some people are getting one or two or three or four. We're not there. <laughs> we can afford it. <laughs> Thus, even though I just reported earlier 
that at the broader institutional level there appears to be deep chasms with respect to cohesion, unity, common purpose. There is demonstrable convergence at stakeholder leadership levels here at DUT. Whether you think about the institutional forum, the unions, the student parliament, the SRC, I see a lot of convergence of purpose. In 2023, we will design flagship projects that will deepen and sharpen these convergence. Let me go to the third strategic objective under this perspective we call stewardship. Creativity. Creativity is the bedrock for innovation and entrepreneurship that permeates our Envision 2030. Leveraging our collective institutional creativity, we crafted and presented to Senate at its 22 November 2022 meeting a revolutionary philosophy of education which just states in no more than 11 words. Our creativity and innovation shapes adaptive graduates that transform society. That's our mantra now going forward as DUT. It's a philosophy that replaces the old and hackneyed philosophy many universities of technology pride themselves in that focuses on educating and training for the world of work that is actually becoming a myth to many of our young people. So why would we educate and train for a world of work that no longer really exists? That's why we've had to change our philosophy and approach. DUT no longer wants to produce graduates that walk distances looking for jobs as if they are pursuing a mirage. DUT now wants to produce what we call adaptive graduates. This type of a graduate is one with the acumen to initiate, to influence, and or to respond to changes in the world with alacrity, with agility, with versatility. They are the graduates that will transform our society and its economy. In 2022, we performed well in introducing divergent thinking in academia through introducing learning methodologies like problem-based learning, like uh, universe, universal uh, design learning. We have already introduced a few creative ideas even in how, in how we are managing and even in reporting with ideas of frugal reporting that we now pursue. So I look forward as 2023 starts on the implementation of this unique philosophy that will change not only DUT, but actually many universities of technology that will follow DUT as actually they are currently doing. Our creativity and innovation shapes adaptive graduates that transform society. We can no longer educate and train people who have, you know, channel vision, people who, when confronted with the difficulties of life, because life is always difficult. They don't know how to use their knowledge and innovations to pivot themselves into something else that may not even have been fathomed. Those are the graduates we now want to produce. Going to the second perspective, that we call systems and processes. It's the second, of course, of our enabling and effective perspectives. Systems and processes breathe life into any strategy. 
and they are integral to the realization of a performing, accountable and impactful organization. To an organization that is creative, distinctive and impactful. This perspective comprises three strategic objectives, namely innovative curricula and research, digital environment and state-of-the-art infrastructure. But before I delve into these three strategic objectives, let me just report on two people-focused systems and processes that are actually the lifeblood of everything we do at a university, namely our enrollment this year, and also our institutional review, alignment, and transformation process. On enrollment, as of last Friday, 3 March, 30,549 students had been registered against a target of 30,723 students that we had planned in agreement with the Department of Higher Education and Training uh, to enroll this year. This is 99.4% of our total enrollment. <laughs> Remember, I'm quoting figures of a week ago. I think by now we have more than 100% of what we had expected to enroll. That we have registered this number at the beginning of March with minimal disruption compared to previous years and against many challenges associated with the National Student Financial Aid Scheme is yet another victory. For the investment in efficiency of our systems and in the maturity of our stakeholders, especially the SRC. I made comments earlier about advances we are making in inserting the DUT way and thereby introducing a different institutional culture across all our internal stakeholders. A few comments on institutional review. Again, before I go to the three strategic objectives. Borrowing from Pascal Finet, an entrepreneur of note, people are not a resource. But people are the source of everything we do. <clears throat> they are the source of advancement, but they are also the source of degeneration, as we see what the source of degeneration in this country is. It's people. In 2022, we commenced the implementation of new Envision 2030 inspired functions and structures that were approved by Council on the 4th of December 2021. In finance, in human capital services, in information, communication, technology and technology services in real estate management, in institutional planning, monitoring and evaluation, we now have several highly qualified senior managers. We are continuing with phase two of our organizational review this year. Our priority and focus for 2023 is to ensure that with the benefits from the institutional review of these four or five units I referred to, and a few more that we will also do in the area of support services. We will take those resources and reinvest them in academia. In our enrollment and efficiency plan 2020 to 2025, we committed as DUT to the reduction in our atrociously high student staff ratios amongst many other academic commitments we made. We have to make good on those commitments. And there's no other way of making good on those commitments other than to look at areas where we may be bloated, areas that could possibly be affected by the introduction of our new ERP, the way, the duty way in terms of how we work, 
all of those contribute towards resources that we would require to reduce our high student staff ratios and assure the broader community of the quality of education we provide. Now, having given you a taste of these two very current systems and processes around enrollments, around institutional reviews, let me go back to the strategic objectives. The first one, under systems and processes, we call it innovative curricula and research. Innovative curricula and research are about providing curricula that stimulate creativity and innovation that in turn generate new knowledge and solutions to the broader society. Actually, just this Wednesday on the 8th of March, I did a lot of preaching at Senate when it met around what innovative curricula and research really mean. In fact, probably I need to, to do a seminar on that. Because I do think sometimes when we are asked questions, why is DUT focusing on research? I think it's because people don't understand what we mean by curricula that stimulate creativity and innovation and that in turn generate new knowledge and solutions. When we are at a university, we are not, we are not a teacher at a primary school or a high school who uses a book almost exclusively without being expected to do research on whatever is in the book, which may be outdated by the time it is read. At university, you teach on the basis of research and the most updated that you can find. In the process of teaching, you reflect on what you are doing whether what you planned to impart on the students is really being experienced and lived by the young people you are imparting knowledge to. If you think going to a lecture is simply about regurgitating what you have known for the last 20 or 30 years, then you better go back to teach at a high school not at a university. Therefore, teaching and learning at a university is about even creating knowledge about what you are teaching in order for you to teach better next time you teach that particular subject. That was part of my preaching on Wednesday. So starting in 2020, we have been building capacity in project-based learning as I said earlier and universal design learning. We've been building that amongst our academics. Still I'm sweating. These two interrelated approaches to learning are foundational if we are to produce adaptive graduates that will transform our society and our economy. Our focus in 2023 is to embark on a path we call teaching and learning reimagined. Using this groundswell of academic capacity developed, and there's more that still needs to be developed. Curriculum transformation designed to ensure that our programs align with our new philosophy and help us to meet national and international imperatives will be our focus in 2023. Coming to the second perspective under systems and processes, digital environment speaks to optimized service delivery and agile, efficient, and effective ways of working. Actually, unlearning too. DUT's current challenges are largely about old, inefficient, rigid, transactional systems that lead to staff losing too much time on delays and malfunction. They stifle innovation and divergent thinking that we seek. However, we have an initiative 
in place. The implementation of phase one of our new ERP system commenced on 1 April 2022. This first phase simply builds an ERP platform in four critical areas, namely finance, procurement, human capital services, and student information. Phase two, which will start immediately after the end of phase one, uh, phase one on 30 April, that's when phase one will end, will see us plug in more functionality to this platform that we will have built by the 30th of April. While our new ERP is being implemented, we have not been twiddling our thumbs doing nothing, waiting for it to be implemented. We have so far digitalized several operations, for example, online registration of students, online SRC elections, and some aspects of our procurement and financial processes. Digitalization does not only start and end with mechanical and operational systems. Our focus in 2023 is to explore digitalization in supporting our curriculum transformation. Several technological advancements in artificial intelligence, 3D printing, gamification, virtual reality, simulation, and so forth, where is Professor Takur? are at our disposal for this purpose of curriculum transformation. In an environment where some of our students would like to go for their work integrated learning, but there is no company that is prepared to provide them with that opportunity. We've got to think different. On state-of-the-art infrastructure, we continued with the implementation of our long-term spatial plan 2020 to 2040. In pursuit of provision of contemporary working, learning and living spaces. The plan includes construction of new buildings. It focuses on deferred maintenance of our existing facilities, deferred for many, many years, 10 years or more. As a result, several buildings and I'll mention a few. There are actually too many to mention. Open House. Go to Open House. Go to Mansfield Hall. Go to the library complex. Go to S Block. Go to Cane Growers Hall. Go to Ritson Hall. Go to Ritson Blocks G and H. Go to the Indumis Office Block. Go to the Inobis uh, Center Block. they look different. Sadly, the construction of our two big new buildings, namely the engineering building that is over there, right here at this campus, and the student center at Steve Vigo campus experienced, or has experienced delays since 2020. And more especially delays just about three months before the construction was to be complete towards the end of last year. They remain at about 90% completion right now. I can assure you they will be completed soon. On the back of Council's further investment in infrastructure, the demolition of several small old buildings at our Steve Vigo campus will make way for the construction of a a new administration block. I'm one of those who hardly has an office at DUT because the VC's office used to be in a, an old house that was way back, uh, remodeled into offices called Milena Court. In a few days, it will be demolished together with many others to give way to a big administration building. Several other developments at Ritson campus, including a health sciences building to bring together all the disciplines, an innovation hub 
that will also house our Confucius Institute and assist us in many of our innovation and entrepreneurship activities. Those will be soon part of DUT's footprint. So for the foreseeable future, you pardon us. Pardon council, pardon management. DUT will be a construction site. But what we know is that from about 2025, when we'll have constructed those buildings, DUT will not only be just different, it will be more than that. It will be an institution we'll all be proud of to show to anybody who visits us. It will be a home for many of us. At its 26 November 22 meeting, Council approved for submission to our Minister a uniquely DUT student housing project that will see almost 11,000 student beds. That's about 35% of our current student population being provided by 2025 in partnership with NESFAS and the public uh, uh, sec uh, private sector. Of course, all of this is subject to ministerial approval. We submitted a proposal around about the 15th of December, 2022. The minister is still mulling over it. Of course, I'm glad that the minister that has it on his table is the, still the minister after the, the reshuffle. <laughs> we are not going to get into problems with a new minister who says, okay, I've got this proposal from DUT and the minister to whom it was uh, delivered has just left. I wonder what is in it for him. And then it falls by the wayside. This additional capacity of 11,000 beds will take us much closer towards aligning with DHET's policy on student accommodation that expects that we must, actually most universities have to, provide 50% of beds. By the way, we have just around 10% of our own beds as DUT. The rest of the beds, which is a great majority, about maybe 15,000 or so, we have to go around in great competition with MUT, with TVET colleges, with the University of KwaZulu-Natal, trying to get landlords who can give us those 15,000 or so beds. And that's why we want our own 11,000 beds by 2025. Of course, as you are aware, one of the biggest challenges that has led to lots of student protests over the years is this thing about accommodation. So bear with us, young people. We have your back. We may not have now, but yes, the project, if the minister approves, the project will start immediately, and by 2025, we should have those 11,000 beds. Of course, provided Amadela Ngobona and so forth don't stand in the way. <laughs> Our security system has remained an albatross for the longest time, we must admit. This year, we'll see an improvement of our security system with the installation of new technology systems, including biometric uh, systems, CCTV installations, drone technology, and so forth. Let me go to sustainability, the last but one perspective. While Envision 2030 has a 10 year horizon, our commitment to a culture of shared responsibility and accountability reminds us that we are merely transient custodians of this public good called Durban University of Technology. Inevitably, we have a duty, therefore, to preserve DUT 
for future use by many generations to come. In this respect, the sustainability perspective comprises three strategic objectives, namely distinctive education, financial sustainability, green ecosystems. Sustainability is actually the first of two, and we call them influencing and impacting perspective. So the first two are enablers, and the last two perspectives that sustainability and society are really about what we can do, what impact we can make in the broader society. Distinctive education is about creating a unique, compelling, and a future-oriented living and, and learning environment. In so many ways, what I reported, we will focus on under the last two perspectives, stewardship, systems, and processes, are actually catalysts for such a compelling and a future-oriented living and learning environment. In fact, when we had a visit from the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee on Higher Education, Science and Innovation, recently, I think it was on the 23rd of January, some parliamentarians commented that they never thought of anything else about DUT other than being the protest capital of higher education. They said they had been expecting many broken windows all over the place and doors that don't exist. They told us they had seen several pigsty type residences at many other universities. They also said they had been to universities that claimed to have five-star student accommodation. I'm not going to mention names. They did. They said, after doing a walkabout in some of our residences, they said, well, then your residences must be 10-star. If those res residences we saw somewhere in Gauteng are 5-star, it must be 10-star here. Because of the investment we have made in all our residences, and I know that the Indomiso residences are lagging behind a bit, but not because there is no money allocated to do that. There is money and they will be renovated like the others that have already been renovated. Our focus for 2023 in terms of creating this unique, compelling and future-oriented living and learning environment will be to enhance our co-curricular initiatives in academia, co-curricular initiatives like Sia Pumelela, that is about student success, initiatives around arts, sports, recreation and culture, so that we produce these adaptive graduates that will have a holistic perspective about life. Life is more than just going to your lecture halls, writing exams. Life is more than about doi doing. It's about arts, it's about sports, it's about music, it's about recreation. In 2019, we sent a group of SRC, or let me say student leaders, to China. If you go to any institution in China, and I've been to many, you see a buzz of young people who are actually very academically successful, but also successful in the arts, in sports, in all sorts of things. You find them being everywhere, keeping them busy, and not only thinking about maybe drugs and what, uh, as what has become a pastime for young South Africans in this country. So until the university, and starting with this university, also focuses on introducing young people to arts, sports, 
recreation, cultural activities, and so on, will continue to moan incessantly about what young people fail to do, or about what young people do that is out of kilter with the values and principles we espouse. Financial sustainability. To ensure sustain, uh, uh, financial sustainability and ensure that it is a reality, DUT lives within our means within, uh, without incurring budget deficits. In fact, most of the infrastructure, deferred maintenance on our infrastructure, the funds, I'm not going to mention because you know this country. I'm not going to mention what funds I'm talking about. But the funds that have been used are mainly DUT funds. We haven't gone to a bank to ask for funds. Of course, our Department of Higher Education and Training supports us to the hilt with some of those funds. But the majority of the funds that we are using to do most of what you will see, of course, except the Indomiso Engineering Building and the Student Center at uh, Steve Beagle, which are funded mainly by the Department of Higher Education and Training, quite a number have been funded by council funds. DOT's budget policy includes several budget parameters that guide allocations and provide benchmarks and norms on several big uh, budget items. For example, we make sure at DUT when we plan salary increases or the salary budget for each year that we do not exceed 62% of the DHET norm for the, for the salary bill versus income from the block grant and tuition fees. We strictly adhere to that. There are universities in this country that spend over 70%, 80% of their funds on salaries meaning that you just have to employ people to sit around because there is no chalk to write on the board for those who still do so. There is no equipment to take students in a laboratory, so we keep to that norm. We have sustainability principles on salary increments. In, in as much as I'm boasting that our salary increase for 2023 is not one, two, three, four, uh, I'm not going to mention, but we have not had to borrow money. We've not, we, we didn't have to breach the 62% limit that is part of the DHT norm. We can afford it. There are many other systems we've put in place to, assure, uh, to ensure that we have financial sustainability in what we do. The University Planning and Resources Forum is a broad-based management forum at which the nexus of planning, budgeting, resource management, risk management, all of these are in place to ensure alignment among our Envision 2030, the Strategic Plan 2030, our Extended Annual Performance Plan, our Annual Strategic Risk Register, and many other associated documents. We are a viable system here at DUT. We don't just manage because we woke up today, felt like, let's do this, let's do that. We plan very carefully. Green Ecosystems is the third under this perspective we call sustainability. Green Ecosystems is about making an environmental sustainability a core feature in the university life, 
and in the projects that we are about. The year 2023 will see more greening projects being implemented, including the installation of recycling bins and reverse vending machines. There is a rainwater harvesting project that will be piloted in 2023. The water collected will be used for various non-freshwater requirements of life and work at the university. Our students, with the support of staff in academia, some academic departments, and in support services, lead the university in the One Residence, One Garden project. Students come up with innovative ideas on how to establish gardens, not bound by space. In both duty-owned and outsourced residences, this is what happens. Students also run cleaning campaigns and promote energy saving and water saving in their midst. Several entities, both internal and external, are involved in these projects. In 2022, we conducted a solar feasibility study that involves three sub-projects. Firstly, the viability of DUT procuring a solar manufacturing plant not very far from here in, uh, at Indomiso. Secondly, we are in the final stages of procurement processes for the design and installation of a 230 kilowatt carport system. Thirdly, we are almost ready with the design and installation of a 47 kilowatt solar photovoltaic system on our S block at the Steve Beagle campus. Firm decisions will be taken in the first semester of 2023 in all of these three that I mentioned. The last perspective that is about influencing and impacting society is called society. Everything I've, prevent, uh, I've presented under each of the earlier perspectives stewardship, systems and processes, sustainability, everything there has its goal being to contribute towards improving the lives and livelihoods of our broader society.